Adding a touch of drama with Luminar Neo's re, uh, Studio Light Tool is our topic today on uh, Luminar Coffee Break. Let's see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes or less, starting now. Hello, everyone, and welcome. All right, so we're going to work with a tool that most people don't use, and that's our Studio uh, Light Tool. I love this tool, but I will admit, let me pull it up here, it is a little complicated, all right? So let me show you what we're talking about. Well, the first thing I did to this image, this is before and after, ready? Here we are, this is the original image, and you've heard me talk about this image before. I totally blew this shoot. So this was one of those shots. I loved Ashley in it. Harsh lighting on her forehead. Just This was a nightmare of a shoot that I screwed up on. But look what we could do to it to salvage it and make it look really good. And actually, I'd probably bring a little bit of light onto that rose, which we could do in a moment. All right. So here's the difference. All right. Um, I'm going to just come down to develop. And then... I did the traditional portrait retouching, fixed her skin, now the Studio Relight tool. This is where we're gonna begin, all right? And then the rest of it, I'll show you how that uh, plays into this. So here it is, before and after. Look at the patterns. Now, a couple things with this Relight tool. When you, let me reset it. There it is. So now I just reset it. It isn't that simple. Just so, so if, if you ever used this tool and thought, oh my God, I just can't get it, I'll show you why. And once you learn this little secret, then you'll be like, oh wow, now I totally get it. So here we are. The first thing we're gonna do is we have to use an arbitrary amount. All right. Now, when I do that arbitrary amount, I just put amount in, it automatically puts a pin on the scene. That's the lighting pin. What I want to do for this one, because the light is coming in this direction, I'm moving it over. Now, this is what you normally see and think, ew, I don't like it. Well, of course, because it's very harsh, you try to go back a little bit on the, on the amount. Now nah, it's looking a little bit better, but still, it's not perfect, all right? And there's a reason for that. We still have to use these other sliders. So I'm going to start here just for now. And I'm going to go a little bit harsh just so I can see what I'm doing. Now, watch this. Here's the brightness. Ready? Brightness deals with that light. The, the light contrast, ooh, look at that. That's where it's really going to help us. Think of this as the overall light of the image itself without adjusting this light. So think of it in that direct, in that in that um, mentality, to where this light contrast is going to deal with the the background of this light, but it's not going to affect this light here. All right, as you can see, see that. All right, so I'm going to bring it right about here. Let's bring it out a little bit more. Smooth it out. Let's see. Let's bring up the brightness a little bit. All right. Again. It's a building block. We have this set. Now we come down to here. I'm not going to mess with, I mean, I could add different colors to that light, but that's really not what we want to do right now. And here's the depth. Well, the depth's not going to do anything for us yet until we open up this section here. Well, I want to come in, and I think I used, like, well, there's different patterns we could use. I want to use um, maple leaf shutter. You know what? I'm going to leave it none for now, but this is what I did do. Yep, dots. I used dots. So there we go. So I used dots. Now, down in here gives you the, the ability to maneuver that light or the, um, the pattern, and that's because I'm moving that light around. And the scale, look at this. I make it large or make it really, really small. So let's put it somewhere right about here. Now, I love what it's doing to her body, not a fan of what it's doing to her face, all right? So that's fine. Let's add the depth to it. So look, look what depth is doing. It's either making it much brighter or it's dialing it back. So I'm going to put it right about here. And let's adjust the amount. 
And that's the brightness of the light itself. There we go. All right, there we have it. Now, if I were to present this to you, you should say to me, what the heck? It makes your face look horrible. Well, that's where we're gonna mask it. So if, if I really did use a gobo with this, and that, that's what that's called, a gobo, go between. If I really did use a gobo like this, I would feather it to where it's not, adjust, not hitting her face, it would just hit her body. And the problem with that in the studio work, it's a creative tool. So it's either hit or miss. Either you nail it or you don't nail it. And unfortunately, if you don't nail it, it's really, really hard to overcome it. So that's why this tool is so cool that after the fact, you could apply it. All right? So here we are. What I'm going to do is brush. And I'm going to load just at a lower strength for now. I'm using the bracket keys to make the brush bigger or smaller. And all I want to do is come around the face. And I want to get that light off of her as much as I can. And actually, I did paint, didn't I? So let's invert that. There we go. That's what I wanted. All right. Go back to the brush. All right. So look, look what we just did there. Look how we took it off her, off her face and it's just on her body. I'm going to come back a little bit and go paint. And let's just do just a little bit and see what that does. Yeah, just very little. So you can tell it's still there, but it's not overbearing. I think I went a little too much. So I'm going to just finesse it and just erase it just a little bit. There we go. All right. So there we have it. I like how everything is looking so far. Now is where the rest of the magic comes in. So I love what we did here. And let me get back to where we were. Uh, we were way down here. All right, here we go. So we were way down here. I was hoping it was going to erase the rest of the edits coming up. Let me see if I can. Nope. All right, so it brings it back. So I'll have to erase those for you to show you what I did. So here I am, Studio Light. Here's the one develop that we brought in. And you can see what that does for me. So I'm going to reset it. So that forehead, I still think is a little too hot. So I'm going to dial back the entire image. Remember, global change versus local. Now under masking, what I want to do is use the um, linear gradient tool. And I just want to apply it right about there. There we go. Look at that. So look, look, look how we got rid of that the hot spot on her forehead. Well, now the second develop I did, well, you can see what it's doing. Look at the eyes. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Ready? Watch the eyes. Ready? Before, after. Look at that. So you saw I brought the eyes out and this is how I did it. Just went in here. Oh, let's go the opposite direction. And I'm going to bust out the shadows a little. So now the whole image is looking good, but I just want the eyes. That's where the brush tool comes in. I'm going to paint the effect. And just because of I knew that I messed up earlier on this. So what I'm going to do is instead of making the brush really, really big, I'm just going to come in. Oh, I get some strength would help. I put it to 100. And I'm just going to come across the eyes. And normally... I will go across the bridge of the nose too, but look what it did to the nose. I just don't like how it, how it emphasizes it. So I'm gonna go back to erase. Let's take it off the bridge of the nose. So once again, global change. I affect the entire image and then dial it into where I want it. And now let's go back to the top one. Ooh, look what this does. All right, so that top one that I just did here, ready? Look what it's doing. It's coming in and making the entire scene just a little bit dark. And if we look at the masking, once again, I masked out the face. So let's just reset it so you can see what I did. So adjustment, make the entire image dark. However, 
I'm going to brush. I'm going to erase the effect at 100% on her face. And you know what? While I'm here, let's see if we can do this down here too. Oh, yeah, yeah look at that. All right. Um, that's a little too much. So let's paint the effect back in right about here. There we go. All right, and there we have it. All right, so again, just a real quick recap. We had to develop the image first. And of course, from here, I used my favorite portrait tools. Now the studio light does all the heavy lifting for me. Look at this. From this to this. And I like how that's looking. But then I wanted to shape the rest of the light and brought it in here. Now, you're probably asking yourself, which I hope you are, Fidelity, couldn't you have added another studio light and then use that to um, shape and sculpture the rest of the image? The answer to that is yes, 100% I could have. In this case right here, and for teaching purposes, it was easier to explain how to use the develop tool because you're so used to that. And that's a quick way. Now, if you have time, go back and try to get rid of some of those develop tools and then use the, uh, the studio tool, studio light, and see if you get the same result. You'll find that doing it that way, it's more precise and it's, it's less work. But for, for this tutorial, I wanted to give you a glimpse on how that studio light actually works. Now, it's named studio light. That doesn't mean you can't use it for outdoor portraits. You can. You just have to be cautious with the way what I just did. Maybe if a person is in a forest scene, this will be a perfect tool to use because you can make it look like the trees or the light from the trees is coming in and casting those beautiful shadows on the subject like this, the gobo. You could do it like this, but make sure on the face, so it's not distracting, either tone it down a bit or bring it out, all right? So there we have it. Now, for those of you that are here watching, of course, stick around for the Ask Me Anything segment. For everyone else, I want you to look really close at this. This is our coffee break. So on, on Wednesdays uh, for the rest of this month, we'll be here at 1 p.m. Easter time. If you want to be part of the questions and answers that we do after the show, please join us. Copy that link. We'll see you there if you're watching it from the rebroadcast. Thank you so much for watching it. Please make sure you share it with those you feel that could learn from this. If you're here today, please stick around for the Ask Me Anything segment. For everyone else, thanks for watching and we'll see you at the next coffee break.